Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to talk about creating 3D effects with 2D objects. If you'd like to follow along with the video, there's a link to the source file down in the video description, uh, so you can click on that and download the file. If you just want to check out the file, check out the hierarchy and how everything's set up, or the animation keys, uh, you can just hit the open and rive button on the same source file. With that being said, let's hop into it. Okay, so like I said in the intro, we're going to be uh, working on creating 3D effects with 2D objects. Now, what we're going to be doing in this video is uh, putting this satellite in orbit around the planet here. Now, we're, we're also going to animate the planet, uh, make it spin on its axis, um, but also put that satellite in orbit. Now, to create the 3D effect for the satellite, we're going to be using a combination of a couple different things. We're going to use scale. We're going to use position and we're going to use custom draw orders. Now, the combination of these three things will allow us to actually make the satellite uh, not only be in orbit, but rotate around itself. So um, the first thing we need to do is actually set up our custom draw orders. Now, um, let's go ahead and start with the satellite here. Um, so as you can see, it's all broken down into its different groups. Uh, so we've got the base, which is this uh, center cylinder here, and then the left and right wing, um, which are like the um, solar panels on the side. So what we're going to need to do is add some custom draw orders to the left and right wing, and then this little uh, purple window here. So let's start with the wings here. Uh, so I'm going to select the group hit the plus button next to draw order. And now you can see we've got two draw orders. We've got the normal draw order, which means that this group is adhering to the way things are set up in the hierarchy. And then you've got draw rule one, which is your custom draw rule. So if we open up the uh, settings for that, you can see we've got its name, so we can rename it if we want. And then we have the draw order, which is above target or below target. And then we can select our target. Now, uh, in this case, if you notice, the uh, wings are underneath the base, and um, to get these wings to rotate around that, we actually need to create a custom draw order to allow us to place these groups in front of the uh, base group here. So we're going to set it to above target, select the target button here, and now we don't want to select the group, we actually need a shape. So what we're going to do is open up the base group here, select the top shape, and then when we click on the... Oops, let me go back to the swing here. When we uh, select the custom draw rule, now you can see that it's actually in front of the um, base group there. And when we're set to normal, it's behind it. Okay, so we need to do the same thing on the opposite wing here. So the right wing, I'm going to add a custom draw rule. Oops, don't need to select it. Uh, make sure it's set to above target. And then we need to select our target, which is this top shape here. Okay. So now we've got our wings set up. We need to add another draw rule for this um, this uh, window here. So I'm going to go into the um, window, create a new draw rule, go to the settings. And instead of being above the target, what we want to do is actually allow this um, window to go behind our target. So now when we go and set this up, instead of above, we want to set it to below target select the target and we don't want to select the top shape in this group we want to select the bottom one so now you can see when we toggle that on it goes behind our base group which is exactly what we want okay so we've got the satellite set up uh, the last thing we need to do is set the uh, planet up because um, we want this satellite to be able to go in front and behind the planet. Now, what we don't want to do is nest our draw orders. So we've got um, draw orders here nested underneath the satellite group. So we don't want to put another um, draw order on top of the satellite or on the satellite group or else we're going to get some weird um, draw order things happen. So instead of putting this new draw order on the satellite, we're going to tell the planet to go in front or behind the um, satellite here. So let's select the planet group, uh, go into our draw order and we want to set it to above the target and we'll select the top shape in the satellite group, which is that same shape we've been using. And once that's done, you can see that when we select that um, custom draw order, the satellite is now behind the planet. All right, let me reset this really quickly here. And uh, yeah, so that's going to be it for the um, design and rigging part. So let's hop into animate mode and actually uh, show you how to create the 3D effect.
Okay, so here we are in animate mode, and the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and extend our uh, timeline because we only have a second right now, and this is going to be a, uh, a longer animation. Um, I'm going to give myself six seconds on the timeline, um, but we're only going to use three seconds of it, um, and the rest of the timeline is just going to be used so we can offset some keys here. So let me create a work area really quickly. Um, let's see. Let's create a work area that's three seconds long. We'll start at two seconds here. And then we'll end it at five seconds. So here. And make sure that's on five. Okay, that's good. Okay, so to get this animation started, what we're gonna do is animate the clouds on the planet and have them rotate around the planet. Now this is gonna be really straightforward all we have to do is animate the trim path of each one of these strokes. So I'm going to go into the planet group, find the clouds here, and each one of these uh, custom shapes has its um, has a stroke and it's got an active trim path. So I'm going to go ahead and key the initial offset and then go to the end of the timeline and then select each one of these strokes and just add a hundred percent to it because I want it to do one full loop around the planet um, in the time frame that we have set up here. So I'm going to go through each one of these shapes and just stick a one on the end of it, um, which will allow each one of these paths to loop around the planet. So oop, this one needs that. Um, Okay, last one. Okay, uh, I'm gonna change the playback type here from one shot to loop and then let's preview this, make sure we like it. I think it looks pretty good. I don't wanna add any cubic curves on it because these are, I just want them to rotate at the same pace around the uh, planet there. Okay, so now that we've got this uh, planet moving, now we can actually work on the more difficult part, which is getting this uh, satellite rotating around itself. So uh, we'll do that and then we'll put the satellite in orbit around the planet. So let me zoom in here a little bit. And the way we're gonna do this is first get the uh, wings rotating around and then we'll set the, uh, we'll get the, um, actual window here uh, moving around as well. And that'll uh, give us our timing and um, allow us to get everything lined up just right. So let's start with the uh, left wing here. And the way we're gonna do this is it's gonna make this uh, very simple. So let's set the uh, initial X position key here at the beginning of the work area. And then I'm going to go uh, halfway down the work area. Actually, we have too much time here. Uh, I only want this to be a three second loop, not a four second loop. So let me, let me just back this up really quickly. Just like that. I think that's right. Let me check that. Yep. Yeah, okay. All right. So we've got our um, left wing uh, initial X position key. Uh, created here at the beginning of the work area. Then I'm going to go halfway through the work area. So to three seconds. And I'm going to drag the left wing to the opposite side of the um, of the base there. And if you're having this snapping kind of uh, snagging your wing as you're grabbing it, just hold that command button or control on Windows, and that'll toggle the snapping off. Okay, so we've got the uh, wing on the opposite side now. And I want it to return to its original position at the end of the work area. So I'm going to copy this original key and paste it at the beginning of the work area. Now, I'm not going to apply any easing yet. We're going to wait till uh, the end to do that. So uh, let's just take a look at this. So you see it's going to the right side and then back to the left side, which is uh, what we're looking for. But you, I mean, it's obvious that um, the wing is staying in the same, pointed in the same direction. And if it's coming in front of that, um, that middle cylinder there, it's actually going to rotate towards us. So what we're going to do is use scale um, to change its orientation and make it look like it's actually rotating around. So I'm going to set, uh, set keys for the original uh, X scale here and then go to um, three seconds. And I'm just going to throw a negative in front of the X, which is going to rotate that um, 
not rotate it, but scale it so that it's in the opposite orientation when it's on the opposite side of the uh, cylinder. And you can see that creates a nice um, rotating effect there. And then we need to return it to its original scale at the end here. So I'm just going to select this uh, X key, copy it, paste it. And then you can see um, it's doing basically the same motion, but backwards. So now that we have the, uh, the motion how we want it, what we're going to do is set up our uh, use our custom draw rules here. So um, I'm going to have this turning uh, to the right. So it's going to pass in front of the cylinder here. So I'm going to go ahead and key the draw rule, the normal draw rule or the um, the custom draw rule. And then when it gets to the opposite side, I'm going to key the normal draw rule, which will allow it to go behind the cylinder. Just like that. And then when it gets back to here, we'll key that normal draw rule or the uh, the custom draw rule again. All right. So now that we have all this, what I'm going to do is select our position and scale keys, put cubic easing on there, and that'll just help that motion just a little bit uh, to make it look even better. OK, so we've got our uh, left wing going. We're going to use the exact same process on the right one. So I'm going to key the initial uh, position and scale and then go to the center of our work area. Um, drag it to the opposite side here. All right. Set the opposite uh, or the inverse scale there, which is negative 100. Copy this first key paste it to the end of the timeline and then let's set those uh, draw rules so um, it's going to go behind the cylinder when it first rotates around just like so and then on its next pass to go back to the opposite side it's going to come in front of the cylinder and then we'll reset that draw rule all right i'm going to go into this select my scale and position keys put the cubic curves on there and let's take a look at that OK, so that looks pretty good. Um, now what we need to do is actually get this um, window moving from side to side. Now, um, the window is going to be a little different. It's, uh, we're we're going to use the same process, but instead of starting it from the center here, we're going to start it from the left side. And then we're going to go to the center of the timeline or the center of our work area, drag it to the opposite side and then return it back to its original position just like so. Now let's set up those uh, draw rules. So, okay, it's gonna come in front first. So let me key that. And then here it's gonna go behind, key the custom draw rule, and then it's gonna return to the front. Now, let me uh, add those, let add the easing here to the position. Okay, now you can see that um, the, the window is not where it should be. We want the window uh, to be in the center here when both of the wings are exposed and sort of looking flat. So what we need to do is adjust the timing um, for this ellipse. So we're going to do that by offsetting the keys. So I need to create some pre keys here. So I'm going to copy the last two keys, paste them at the beginning of the timeline and then drag them over because remember this key is the same as uh, this one here and this one's the same as this one and so now what we're going to do is offset these keys forward like so and we'll just work on getting that timing right so that the window shows up in the center at the right time and it seems like it's pretty close so let's take a look at this in real time okay so that looks pretty good as far as rotating that um, satellite around itself. Now what we want to do is actually put this satellite in orbit around the planet. So let's go ahead and do that. And the way we're going to do it is uh, first off, we're going to grab our satellite here, go to the beginning of the timeline, and I'm just going to rotate it 45 degrees because I don't want to go just this way around the planet. Um, going at it more of an angle uh, makes it a little bit more interesting. So we've got our satellite tilted uh, 45 degrees and I'm just going to drag it out here just a little ways from the planet. 
And then we're going to use the same process that we did before. So we've got our uh, leftmost position set up. Let's go to the center of the timeline. Put it at its rightmost position, right and upmost position, like so. And then return it to that original position, just like this. Okay, so now that we have that, what we can do is, um, I guess we can uh, we can do the scale now. So uh, when it's here, let's see. And actually, what we're going to do with the scale is going to be much like what we did with the window. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and key the initial scale, and then we'll shrink it down to zero. And then bring it back to the original scale. I'm going to apply easing to all of these curves here. Let's just give them all cubic. And then we need to offset our scale keys and get those uh, in the right position. So let me just um, add these scale keys in here. And then let's take a look at this. Okay, so maybe we can scoot this forward a little bit, like so. Because we want it to be at its biggest or its largest scale when it's passing in front of us. And then when it gets way back there behind the planet, we want it to be small and stay relatively small until it comes out the other side. So maybe we can scoot this forward just a little bit more. Okay. Very small. Still pretty small on the back side. Okay, so now that we have it um, in the right motion, we obviously need to adjust the draw order for the planet so that we can have that satellite go in front and behind it. So let me select the planet here. And let's see, on the first pass, it's going to be in front. So let's just go ahead and key that normal draw rule. And then it's going to go behind the planet here custom draw rule and then it'll return to the normal draw rule at the end of the work area so let's take a look at that and see if we're happy with it and um, yeah okay so I do like the motion um, it may be a little too fast so if it's too fast for you as well I'm just gonna change the playback speed to 0.5 and that makes it look pretty good so yeah, I think that's going to be it for this video. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave a comment in the video and I'll try to address those as quickly as possible. Um, if you do recreate this animation, be sure to share it on the community because I'd love to see what you're working on. And um, uh, comments are live, so I will leave a comment if you actually uh, share this on the, um, the community. So with that being said, uh, that's going to be it. Uh, thanks for joining us and we'll see you in the next one.